as you can see I have my frankincense sort of scenting up the air and hopefully my asthma won't act, <laughs> act up and then I got my salt lamp candle holder all lit up for this particular tag okay excuse me but I chose this is actually the only book I have on fairies and fae outside of maybe Suki Stackhouse but I chose A Kiss of Shadows by Laurel K. Hamilton so this is the first book in her Mary Gentry series Mary Gentry is a half fae half human woman who is running from the court the fae court because she doesn't want to be executed or something I don't want to talk about this book I don't the point that I want to make is that this book was really good in the very beginning when uh, Meredith Gentry was doing her detective work because she was a private investigator who happened to be half fae and she was sort of running in the circles of fairies and that court that sort of thing it, it's really a whole universe in itself but the reason I said it was good was because I really enjoyed the fact that she was independent of men in that regard however as the story progressed and you get more information you understand that her kingdom where she came from where she ran away from is trying to kill her unless she has a baby and for her to have a baby she started collecting other fairy men to have sex with to <sighs> I can't do this I can't do it so next we have Demons, and I chose the Vampire Hunter series by L.A. Banks. More L.A. Banks, right? Now this is the fourth book in the Vampire Hunter series, and it is called The Bitten. Now the reason that I chose this book in particular is because it was the book that drew the most emotion out of me. Like, for real, like, after I finished reading this book, I shed about two or three tears. Like, they just came, because I was like, uh, uh, they brought him back to life. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get the next book, please? But if you are not familiar with the series, I'll go ahead and fill you guys in a little bit. It is a series about a young woman named Damali. I think Damali Richards. Um, she is what is called a Neteru. Neteru, Neteru, something like that. It's an African term. What a Neteru is, it's someone sort of granted these abilities and these powers to fight vampires and other demons. To be completely honest, I don't recall her really displaying sort of what I would think of that term would, would mean. But in any regard she was the Neteru it was her job to fight demons and vampires and as the series progresses she fought less and less of vampires and more and more of these demons now the reason I didn't staple this under the label of vampires and instead I chose demons is because as the series progressed I just remember being so hooked so so hooked on the scenes revolving around Lilith if you know Lilith you know mythologically speaking she's the wife of Satan or she's uh, Adam's first wife before Eve but I was so hooked on this creature this demon named Lilith and how she ran her damn court baby like she wasn't even taking orders from Satan you see what I'm saying it's like she was telling him what to do but um I really did enjoy this series it is something that I would have to make a whole new video a whole different video about so of course opposite demons we're gonna have angels and I chose another LA Banks book like listen y'all LA Banks covered it all okay girl let's get real unfortunately we only get two books in this series because Miss Bank uh passed you know short at shortly after the well shortly after the release of this one I think but the series is about a wo young woman her name is Celeste Jackson as many of Banks's books are about they're about a, a woman of color you know going against the paranormal um, but in this particular book sh this young lady named Celeste Jackson as I said she's having these nightmares and these visions about the sort of like the end of the world or sort of an uprising of you know evil forces well, I can't remember exactly how the details of the book but I do know that she gets the help of a team of angels to sort of help her sort of come into the woman that she's supposed to be or the warriors that she's supposed to be in order to combat these uh, evil forces that are coming onto Earth. And it was, I really did enjoy this book. I did not like the second book so much. Um, like I said, with Banks, her writing, I'm telling you right now, it is very heavy handed. So the next subject is aliens. And of course, I chose Octavia Butler because, girl, I, girl we're not going to go. Who else was I going to pick? But I chose Lilith's Brood because it was probably the most alien of all of her series to me. Um, the very first book, I think it's, just, it's three books, but as they progressed, I kind of, they were just all right. And there was a reason why, because the first book had a lot to do with humanity, except in the fact that they destroyed Earth and that they need the help of an alien species to sort of breed with them in order to, you know, resurrect, you know, their, their planet. And so with that being present, the book, the first book opens with a woman named Lilith waking up sort of in, you know, it, it is really a complex way to put this, but it's sort of a, sh a, a world inside of a ship. 
um, she's been sort of rescued from Earth as Earth has been destroyed and she's getting, you know, her education from these aliens as, you know, what is the best choice for humanity? You know, should they sleep, should they sort of um, breed with these aliens or should they just go out and die? As the series progresses, you started to get into Lilith's um, her children as it goes forward and I, I don't know I liked it more when it was about a human woman confronting these aliens confronting these issues but as always Octavia Butler is complex and like I said in another video she will she she my, she blows my mind a lot of the times and so the next one is superpowers and I chose Lynn Benedict's uh, Shadows series, Shadow Inquiry series. I absolutely love this series. Um, it's only four books. The problem I have is that, you know, lit, the author, I guess, you know, her publishers were not asking for any more books after the fourth book. I'm very upset by that. When I actually think about, like, this is dead serious, dead serious. When I think about the fact that there's not a fifth book, I really get upset. So I'm going to make this quick. Now, the series takes place in Miami, and it's about a private investigator named Sylvie. And the interesting thing about Sylvie, because this is urban fantasy, is that Sylvie is the descendant of the demon Lilith. Now, Lilith is becoming a theme to this video. I know, I know, girl, I know. In this particular series, being the descendant of Lilith allows Sylvie the ability to sort of nullify magic spells. So, if a witch is trying to put a little spell on, on Sylvie, it, it wasn't worth it. It'd be ineffective for her. Within the whole course of her story, she's often tagged as the god killer because she can kill gods because god can't, you know, influence her. But, you know, I really love this series, and like I said, it's only four books deep. When I think about how there's not a fifth book, I get really emotional and sad and messed up inside. Because I really did like the character of Silly. Um, a lot of people did not like her because she was kind of a brute, so to speak. But uh, for me, I absolutely loved it. It had a great blend of uh, hard-boiled detective fiction along with paranormal. And it just kind of... To me, it just kind of done things right. Because when you read urban fantasy books, a lot of times the characters get distracted by their emotions. You know, they're falling for a man. They decide to sleep with this vampire, sleep with that vampire. You know, doing all kinds of crazy shit that nobody got time for. And they got nothing to do with the plot, per se. But with her, she was just, girl, she was all about her job. And I was like, I'm living for you, Sylvie. But at the same time, she was developing a relationship. And it was a complicated one with another paranormal creature we're on to the last one which is robots or cyborgs and I chose a star is made <laughs> I can't keep it beats. I can't keep a straight face a star is made I don't care about the author's name but it's a star is made featuring the story of Christina Aguilera no I don't think Christina Aguilera is a cyborg I have no books that I can think of that I that features a, a robot or cyborg so I just I don't know I just chose that because it was in front of my face but anyway, thank you guys for watching. I did enjoy this tag. And thank you again, Janie, for tagging me for these Creatures of the Night tag. Now, before this video ends on me or the camera shuts off, I have to tag people. And I'm going to tag some people. Because I think that these guys have shown that they like these kind of books too. You know, they're into this sort of reading as well. So the first one I'm going to tag is, of course, Musica Tati. So, girl, you got to do this tag too. And use Buffy as much as you want. No, I'm just playing. And then I want to tag Hannah also. And then I'll put all these, the information below. Hannah, so you please do it too. I know you, 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 you know about some of this stuff too. And then I'm going to, I'm going to tag Bridget back. Miss Bridget, you're tagged. Yep. You, you have to do this tag now. Yeah, please don't kill me, girl. <laughs>